In 1887, German physicist Heinrich Hertz was conducting experiments to prove James Clerk Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism when he noticed something peculiar. Hertz had placed two electrodes at a distance from each other to generate electric sparks between them so he could detect an electromagnetic field. To get a better look at the spark, he placed the receiver in a dark case but an unintended effect happened as a result of this. The maximum spark length in the receiver was smaller than it was outside of the dark box, and after taking apart the case piece by piece, he found that the side of the box that separated the transmitter from the receiver was the determining factor in the phenomenon. Upon noticing this, Hertz tried different materials to test the effects on the receiver. He found that using a glass box shielded the spark, but using a box made of quartz allowed the spark to transmit. He used this information to then use a quartz prism to break up the light coming from the transmitter, and from this he found that the wavelength of light responsible for more powerful sparks came from the ultraviolet. Hertz didn't do more research on this strange phenomenon after he discovered it, however, so more advancements came from other minds in the coming years, such as Wilhelm Halifax, Philip Leonard, and J.J. Thompson. This phenomenon came to later be known as the photoelectric effect and would be described as light at or above a certain frequency hitting electrons and causing them to fly off the material they previously existed on and send them through the air. Philip Leonard was arguably the biggest pioneer in experimentally demonstrating this effect, using cathode rays to show that it was purely determined by the light's frequency and not by its intensity. But the reason this effect was so intriguing is because it contradicted the classical laws of physics established by Newton, Hooke, and Huygens centuries earlier. Previous experiments, such as the famous double slit experiment in 1801, had led scientists to believe that the light was purely a wave and therefore should always act as such through classical wave theory. However, the photoelectric effect was a direct experimental contradiction to this theory in two key ways. The first was that, according to classical wave theory, the energy from a light wave is uniformly distributed and dependent solely on its intensity, meaning that the kinetic energy of these so-called photoelectrons should increase as the intensity of light also increases. However, Leonard showed that the kinetic energy varies based on the frequency of light and not on its intensity, and thus we have our first contradiction. The second was that, According to classical wave theory, any frequency of light should be capable of ejecting photoelectrons. Hertz and Leonard showed, however, that there was a certain frequency of light that caused these ejections and that it existed in the ultraviolet, and anything below the ultraviolet would not cause this effect, and thus we have our second contradiction. Leonard won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1905 for his work with cathode rays that led to these advancements in the photoelectric effect. That same year, a new up-and-coming scientist, Albert Einstein, published a paper in which he proposed a new revolutionary idea that would fundamentally rewrite the nature of light and explain the confounding photoelectric effect. Einstein's explanation for this phenomenon was that light does not just exist as a wave, but also as a particle, or a discrete energy packet, with its energy depending solely on its frequency. Einstein used an equation derived by Max Planck in 1900 to describe this. He made a bold move by endorsing Planck's turbulent new theories to describe blackbody radiation, but it was a move that would surely pay off in the coming years. To explain the photoelectric effect with light as a particle, Einstein postulated that so-called photons collide with photoelectrons and transfer energy to them in two forms. The first form of energy is that which is required to eject the electron from the atoms they exist in, which he called the work function. The rest of the energy transferred is in the form of the kinetic energy of the photoelectron as it travels freely through the air. Using this relationship for energy along with Planck's previously established relationship for energy, Einstein was able to do two key things. The first was establish a theoretical value for the threshold frequency denoted experimentally previously by Leonard, and define it as equivalent to the work function of the atom. The second key factor in Einstein's explanation was determining the maximum kinetic energy a photoelectron can achieve during emission. 
Using his previously established relationship for the work function, he reached a relationship between the maximum kinetic energy of a photoelectron and the photon's frequency, incorporating Planck's constant and thus explaining the effect with quantum physics. These equations formulated by Einstein in 1905 turned out to be a great way to experimentally calculate the value of Planck's constant, and such was done with extreme precision later in 1916 by Robert Millikan. Milligan, ironically, was motivated by proving Einstein wrong in his particle theory of light and believed that the only reason the photoelectric effect was happening was due to the apparently flawed experimental setups previously done by Leonard and others. Milliken, in his quest, unexpectedly proved Einstein and others further correct through his ingenious setup, which involved a rotating plane of three different metals in a near-perfect vacuum chamber. A blade would constantly clean the metals as they rotated, and the metals would take turns being exposed to UV light. Upon seeing that the photoelectric effect still occurred in his setup, he used a previously established relationship by Leonard, Einstein's equations, and his previously calculated charge of the electron to solve for Planck's constant. His calculations were so precise, in fact, that his calculated value for the constant is still within 0.7% of today's currently accepted value. Even after all this experimental evidence, however, Millikan stood firm in his beliefs, swearing that Einstein was still incorrect, but through means that they did not yet understand. Millikan's thoughts can be summarized through one of his quotes. Einstein's photoelectric equation cannot in any judgment be looked upon at present as resting upon any sort of satisfactory theoretical foundation, even though it actually represents very accurately the behavior of the photoelectric effect. Three Nobel Prizes were handed out throughout the course of the photoelectric effect saga. Leonard in 1905 for his experimental contributions, Einstein in 1921 for his theoretical explanation, and Millikan in 1923 for his experimental validation of Einstein's theories. Alongside black body radiation, the photoelectric effect was thought to be one of the final mysteries of physics during the turn of the 20th century, but upon the discoveries made by these brilliant scientists in both topics, an entirely new world was opened up and the quest for truth continued into the depths of the quantum realm. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.